What's up everyone? Sam here from bitebybite.com and in this video I'm going to show you three different ways that you can know that you are in fact ready for your coding interview. And if you want tons more videos just like this on software engineering careers and coding interview prep, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. We're releasing new videos every week. So as I said, I wanna give you in this video three benchmarks that you can use to know that you are in fact prepared for your interviews. Because a lot of times I find that people spend so much time delaying and delaying and delaying doing their coding interviews because they're just not convinced, they're not confident that they're actually ready for the interview. So I'm gonna give you those three benchmarks, but first I want to acknowledge something that's really important as you're thinking about your interview prep in general. And that is the simple fact that no matter how much time you spend working on your interview prep, you are never gonna feel 100% prepared. You're never gonna feel like, oh, I can guarantee that I'm gonna pass this interview, there's no way that I would ever get a problem that I don't know how to solve. That's just not realistic because there are some problems out there that even the smartest people would really struggle to solve in an interview. And so the reality is that you're never going to be 100% ready for your interview. But that doesn't mean that you should keep putting off your interview forever and you should keep preparing more and more. One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is that they're hoping to get to that 100% mark. They think that if they just do a little more prep, they're eventually going to get this, to this point where they feel 100% and that is not the case. So the biggest thing I wanna encourage you in this video before we get into the three points is make sure that you actually start interviewing. Take a shot. Remember, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take and you don't necessarily have to interview at your number one top tier company right off the bat but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go and actually interview because it's much worse to keep delaying and delaying and delaying than just taking the shot, maybe screwing it up, and then coming back in a year and trying again. So with that, let's get into the three points here. And I wanna acknowledge that these are not perfect, but they are gonna give you a framework, a foundation for which to make a decision about whether you're ready to go into your interview. And so thing number one that you should look for is that you should be able to solve any easy lead code problem and about 80% of medium lead code problems within a reasonable time frame. By reasonable time frame, I'm really talking about like under 30 minutes here. And so you should be able to solve all of these easy problems relatively efficiently and most of the medium problems. Notice that I'm not saying you need to be able to solve all lead code problems, especially not all lead code hard problems, because one of the things about lead code is that some of those problems are likely harder than what you're actually gonna see in your interview. And a lot of times with some of those hardest problems, if you did see it in your interview, the expectation would be very different. The expectation isn't necessarily that you're gonna solve 100% of the problem. It's more they're pushing you to see how much you can accomplish. And so with lead code, when we're thinking about which, which problems are most representative of an actual interview, we're generally looking at easy and medium problems. And so, if we know that we can solve all the easy problems within 30 minutes and about 80% of the medium problems, then we can feel confident that we are going to be able to solve the majority of problems that we see in our interview. I also wanna acknowledge though, that this doesn't mean that you shouldn't practice harder lead code problems. Lead code has lots of hard problems and those are actually a great way to prepare because it's essentially you're over training, you're over preparing for what you would expect to see in your interview. If you can solve a hard problem on lead code, then that means that those easy and medium problems are gonna be even easier for you. This is this idea of progressive overload, which we use a lot when we are doing physical training of various sorts. If you're exercising and let's say that you wanted to run a marathon, you wouldn't practice running like 10 miles, 10 miles, 10 miles, and then all of a sudden expect you could run a marathon. You would wanna be able to run more than a marathon so that when you actually get to race day and you get to competing, it's gonna be easy. So definitely still take advantage of those harder problems on lead code, but realize that just because they are there on lead code does not mean that that is what you would be expected to solve in your interview. And if you did see those in your interview, doesn't mean that you would be expected to come up with the perfect solution within that time frame. Benchmark number two is a little bit more qualitative than benchmark number one, but the second benchmark that I want you to think about when deciding whether or not you're prepared for an interview is do you feel like with enough time you could solve any problem? And this is really important because this gets at one of the core things that I talk about here at Byte by Byte is this idea that it's not about memorizing solutions to specific problems. It's not about just studying lots and lots of problems, grinding and grinding on lead code. It's about understanding a framework for approaching these problems, right? It's about understanding how can we approach these problems even if we've never seen them before. And so 
what that actually looks like in reality is that looks like that feeling of, I don't know that I could necessarily solve this in those 30 minutes, but I have a set of strategies that I can approach. I have things that I can apply to this problem. So even if it's really hard, even if I get kind of stuck along the way, I can continue to break it down and I can continue to make progress. Remember what I was talking about in the previous section about progressive overload. We're going to continue to work on those hard problems. We want to be able to solve those hard problems because it's going to make us it easier for us to solve less hard problems in our actual interview. And so if you feel confident that with enough time you could solve any problem, then that likely means that you have enough of that expertise, you understand enough of the frameworks and the problem solving that you could apply that effectively in your interview. Benchmark number three is that you are able to perform well in mock interviews and interviews at companies that you are less excited about. This is one of the most important things that you can do as part of your interview prep is to actually go and do mock interviews to test your skills. Right? When I was in high school, I took an SAT prep course. And one of the things that we did as part of that was that every week for six weeks, we had to do an entire practice SAT exam. And I'll be honest, it was not the most fun thing to do, but what it did was it allowed me to be super, super prepared when I actually got into the SAT and I knew exactly what to expect. Right? Even though technically these were different exams, they were designed to mimic the SAT as much as possible. And so I was able to make a lot of progress. I was able to be very, very successful in the actual SAT because I did this practice. And so mock interviews are a really great way for you to get that practice in when it comes to actual interview prep. And they're a great way for you to see, oh, I've been doing all these problems on lead code. I've been doing all this practice. But now how does that actually apply when I'm in that real world situation? What a lot of people find is that the mock interviews are either are going to be a lot easier or a lot harder than they expected them to be. A lot of people, when they are doing lots of hard lead code problems and they're feeling like, oh, I'm really stuck and I'm struggling, a lot of times what they find with mock interviews is that, oh, this is actually much, much easier than I expected because the problems are a lot easier than the hard lead code problems and it's a different experience working with their interviewer. But at the same time, you might find that you actually are really struggling with that interaction with some of those other elements of the mock interviews. And so this is one of the best ways to benchmark and understand where you are in the process. Something else that I mentioned at the beginning here, which is really important as well, is that you can also do, instead of mock interviews, interviews at companies that you're less excited about. This is a great way if you have a bunch of interviews lined up and you aren't struggling with actually landing interviews to get that practice and potentially discover companies that you weren't aware of before, or that you weren't sure that they would necessarily be a good fit. They may still not be a good fit, but it's a great way for you to get practice in that real world interviewing environment. And with that, those are your three benchmarks that I want you to keep in mind. One, if you can solve all easy lead code problems and about 80% of medium problems in a reasonable period of time, that's a really good start. Two, if you feel like you could solve any problem with enough time, and three, if you do mock interviews or interviews at companies that you're less excited about and you see good results from those, those are all very strong benchmarks that indicate that you should go ahead and do your interview. And I really wanna encourage you, go ahead and start interviewing. Even if you're not feeling as prepared as you want to, it's better to interview too soon than too late. You're always gonna have opportunities in the future to interview again, but you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So make sure that you go ahead and take that shot. And with that, that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video and you want tons more about interview prep and software engineering, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button. And also we have a free coding interview masterclass that you might enjoy at bitebybyte.com slash masterclass. Go ahead and check that out and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.